In the first video in this section 2.1, we looked at two of homologous series, we looked at alkanes and cycloalkanes. In this video, we're going to look at a third homologous series of hydrocarbons, the alkenes. The alkenes, like the cycloalkanes, have the general formula CnH2n, so they have two hydrogens less than an alkane. So if this is our alkane propane, in order to turn it into an alkene, we lose two hydrogens. So take one off there and one off there. And then these two carbons join together for a second time to form a carbon carbon double bond. So general formula is CnH2n and alkenes always have a carbon-carbon double bond. So the first member of the alkenes is ethene molecular formula C2H4. Gives its full structural formula with the carbon-carbon double bond and this is its shortened structural formula. Notice first member has got two carbons, you can't have an alkene with one carbon because you can't have a carbon-carbon double bond when you've only got one carbon. So just to go back, alkanes first member only had one carbon, it was methane. For cycloalkanes, when you had a ring of carbon atoms, you needed three before you could have a ring, so cyclopropane was the first member. And for the alkenes, you need two carbons, so ethene is the first member. Three carbons, you get propene. And then when you get to four carbons, this is the first time you've got a choice. You can choose where the carbon-carbon double bond goes. So you can have the carbon-carbon double bond between the end carbon and the one adjacent to it or it could be between the two carbons in the middle so these are isomers they both they're both forms of butene both c4h8 but they have slightly different structural formula so the way we name them is you have to name the position of the carbon carbon double bond so this is but one in which tells us the carbon-carbon double bond is on the first carbon-carbon bond. So if you number from this side, it's in position 1, and that would be 2, and that would be 3. If you number from this side, it would be 1, 2, 3. So you always number from the end that gives you the lowest number. So it's but 1 in. Whereas this one, the carbon-carbon double bond is not between the first two carbons, that would be there. It's between the second two carbons, so that would be one, that would be two, and that there is three. So it's but in. The thing to be careful of is when you are numbering the carbon-carbon bonds, don't include the carbon-hydrogen bond. So it's not one, two, three, you're just numbering the carbon-carbon bonds. Okay, so just be careful about that. And thereafter, as you get bigger, you always have to say, you know, the next one's pentene, you could have pent one in, or you could have pent two in, hexene, you could have hex one in, hex two in, hex three in. So it's only ethene and propene that you don't need to put a number in. Okay, next I want to explain the difference between a saturated hydrocarbon and an unsaturated hydrocarbon. Well, the two homologous series we looked at in the first video, the alkanes, represented by that, and the cycloalkanes, they are saturated hydrocarbons, by which you mean all the carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds, whereas the alkenes are unsaturated because they contain a carbon-carbon double bond. Right, so this is very important because the fact that they're unsaturated means that they undergo addition reactions. 
which is a very uh, distinctive uh, characteristic of the alkenes and they undergo lots of different addition reactions which we'll now look at. The one thing which is characteristic to all these addition reactions, okay, so imagine we're just undergoing addition reaction with some molecule, we'll just call XY at the moment. What always happens is you break one of the carbon-carbon double bonds. So instead of having a carbon-carbon double bond in your product, you've now got a carbon-carbon single bond. But remember, every carbon must always have four bonds. Okay. So there's space available here and here to add something to the molecule. And what gets added is this molecule XY, which one goes on to one carbon and one goes on to the other carbon. So you're going from an unsaturated molecule to a saturated molecule by adding something to the molecule. That's why it's called an addition reaction. So we have different names for the different addition reactions depending on what molecule we're adding to it. So if we add a halogen, it's called halogenation. So in this case, we're adding the chlorine Cl2 molecule. So the carbon-carbon double bond breaks and one chlorine goes on to each carbon atom. And this is called a dihaloalkane. Now, in this example, I've used chlorine, but we could also use the other halogens. It could be fluorine, bromine, or iodine. We can also carry out an addition reaction by adding hydrogen. That's called hydrogenation or hydrogenation. So again, we break the carbon-carbon double bond and add a hydrogen to one of the carbon atoms and a hydrogen to the other carbon atom. So in fact, it's an alkane we make by that product, by that process. And the third addition reaction you should know is adding water. It's called hydration. So we break the carbon-carbon double bond. We add an H to one of the carbons and an OH to the other carbon. And this is an alcohol we've made here. And in the next section, 2.2, we'll look at alcohols in a lot more detail. So these are three very important reactions. They're all addition reactions. So we've got halogenation, hydrogenation, and hydration. Very easy to mix these two up. So time, be quite careful about it. Right. The halogenation reaction can also be very useful for identifying whether or not a compound is saturated or unsaturated. And when we're testing for unsaturation, the halogen we use is bromine because we see a nice colour change when that undergoes an addition reaction. So if we mix together an alkene and bromine, as usual, so we break the carbon carbon double bond, making it a single bond. Everything else stays the same. We don't lose any of the atoms. I'm just going to add some. So we add a bromine onto that atom and a bromine onto that atom. But whereas the BrBr, Br, the Br2 molecule gives you a nice brown colour, this molecule is colourless. So we see this colour change from brown to colourless. So the test we see is an unsaturated molecule, like an alkene, decolorizes bromine water. And I'll just demonstrate that to you now. Okay, in these two test tubes, I've got a saturated and an unsaturated hydrocarbon. So in one, I've got cyclohexane, and the other one, I've got hexene. So to find out which one's which, I'm going to add some bromine water to each one. 
So bromine water is just bromine dissolved in water. So I'll add some here. And then I'll add some to the other one as well. It's a wee bit smelly, so I'll just put the lid back on. So first thing to notice is that in both cases the bromine and the hydrocarbon don't mix. Okay, so alkenes and alkanes and cycloalkanes are all insoluble in water. So I'm gonna to have to mix them up to see if they react. So I'll just give them a little shake up. Let's make sure that it's on properly. So we can see that the, this one here on my right has decolorized the bromine water. So that was the unsaturated alkane, whereas the one on the left has not decolorized the bromine water. So that's the way to test whether or not a solution, is, a sample is uh, unsaturated or not. If it's unsaturated with a carbon carbon double bond, it will decolorize the bromine water. Okay, let's look at the properties and uses of uh, alkenes. Well, just like the other hydrocarbons we looked at, alkanes and cycloalkanes, the melting and boiling points increase with the size of the molecule, and that because the strength of the intermolecular force increases as the molecule gets bigger. As you've just seen, like the alkanes and cycloalkanes, the alkenes are insoluble in water. The pure hydrocarbons aren't soluble in water. But the distinctive characteristic of the alkenes is that they undergo addition reactions. And this undergoing addition reactions gives rise to a lot of their properties or lots of their uses. So we use them to make dihaloalkanes, which we make with the addition reaction with the halogen. We use it to make alcohols through the addition reaction uh, with water and we use them extensively to make plastics and this is a really important use of alkenes. It is an addition reaction, we haven't really talked about it because we cover this later on in unit 3 and we'll look a lot more detail at looking at making plastics through addition reactions of alkenes. So, five things you should be able to do. You should be able to recognise and name members of the alkenes with up to eight carbon atoms in the longest chain. You should know what is meant by the terms saturated and unsaturated and know how to test for unsaturation. You should recall that alkenes regularly undergo addition reactions. And you should be able to draw the structural formula of the product following any of the addition reactions, the halogenation, hydrogenation or hydration. And finally, you should be able to recall the properties and uses of the alkenes.